Good afternoon and welcome back to Markets Today. I'm your host, Mbitha Mwema. Now, if you miss our chit chat session, we were looking at the impact of debt on the out, I mean, on the on the forward-looking macros for Kenya. Key things we want to bring out: What does this mean for currency? What does it mean for interest rates? What does it mean for GDP? And that's the growth domestic product. And what does it mean for inflation? Now, before we delve into this conversation, recall that IMF has also come up with a review of its global outlook. It does expect continued weakness. And with regards to Kenya, it has reviewed downwards its outlook for the year, expecting 5.6 percentage growth. Now, to help us understand the dynamics of the country, what IMF is saying and what the country should be concerned with, with regards to risk factors as well as opportunistic factors, in as much as we have reviewed our cap, I mean, our ceiling on debt, we have Mr. David Gitao. He is in a, he's a fixed income as well as a macroeconomic analyst at Saiten. Welcome to the show, Mr. Gitao. Thank you. All right. Before we actually now begin to look at debt, what are your views with regards to IMF revising downwards the growth outlook for Kenya? Okay, for the growth outlook uh, by the IMF, it was expected uh, because, uh, like we've seen from other reports, like also the African Pulse, uh, there's that concern that maybe uh, GDP growth this year might might not be as high as was expected earlier on, mm -hmm. mainly because. Uh, of this expected decline in terms of the agricultural production in the country because of the late onset of the long rains that we experienced this year. Okay. So, uh, in effect, if there is a decline in the agricultural sector, which mainly has uh, the highest contribution to in terms of GDP growth in the country, we definitely affect, we definitely expect a decline in uh, the entire economic growth because it also affects the manufacturing sector because yes. we find that the manufacturing sector in our country is also mainly driven by things such as agri processing, which are also dependent on uh, the agricultural sector as well. Okay. So definitely, uh, it was something expect that was expected. Okay, so it was expected. I mean, I find it very interesting because year in, year out, there's always a conversation of drought, a delay um, on the outset of the long rains. So isn't this something that we should have already found a way to resolve by now, rather than being dependent on it and always having the volatility with regards to GDP growth? Okay, in terms of the agricultural sector, we've seen uh, some uh, some action maybe from the government uh, in terms of, let's say, the irrigation projects that were started, but we all know how the story ended. Okay. But uh, it's still, I think that is one of the main things that the government should look at uh, because, uh, as you all know, agriculture is the backbone of our economy. Okay. So if there's that volatility, definitely, we'll be having the same problems year in, year out. All right. But if, if, if they were able to find something to do, because I know there's a lot of technology that you can actually use to grow your agricultural output without necessarily depending on even soil. Mm -hmm. If that happened, would, you, it, would that actually have a positive impact on GDP if you were able to address the agricultural volatility? I think it will have a positive effect, and on that front, we've also seen the conversation. Uh, be, be, uh, the conversation started on things such as the GMOs, yes. etc. Uh, but nothing tangible has come nothing up tangible. so far. So okay. uh, it's still a conversation that is still out there. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Now let's get to the crux of our conversation today. Last week, the uh, legislature actually came up and revised, they reviewed rather the Public Finance Management Act, reviewing it from stating that the uh, the debt to GDP ratio should be 50% and it, it, it actually uh, erased that element and put in a new uh, parameter saying that the debt can actually go up to 9 trillion shillings. What are your initial thoughts? Is it positive? Is it negative? Uh, <coughs> our initial thoughts definitely uh it's rather negative because we've been having that conversation on debt sustainability in our country. Uh, uh, we have been having that conversation for the longest time if our current levels of debt are manageable or they're sustainable. Initially, uh, like you've mentioned, it was capped at 50% uh, of GDP. And like right now, uh, according to the latest estimates, we are at around 60.2% of GDP. Okay. So uh, in, the, in the essence, it's like we are trying to expand the horizons, uh, but uh, also we are not so sure on the 9 trillion uh, when we're supposed to achieve it in the first place, because right. we are not sure if uh, the 9 trillion will be hit this year or next year. It could be hit overnight if, if, if they wanted, also, because there are no... Uh, so uh, that is one main point of concern, because yes. there isn't a lot of clarity, and from uh, the cabinet treasury, a uh, cabinet secretary of treasury, the acting cabinet secretary, uh, he mentioned that the main uh, thing why they wanted to expand that horizon is to provide more clarity in terms of control and oversight. But uh, I don't really get how that works because uh, we, from the 9 trillion, like we've also mentioned, we are not so sure uh, 
when it's supposed to be hit. So it doesn't offer as much clarity as we, we would expect. Okay. So it's negative and it's certainly a point of concern. It's a point of concern because okay. if it's uh, if it's if you are currently working at 60.2% of GDP already. and the recommended threshold by the IMF, I think it was around 50%. So we already passed uh, the recommended threshold. So I think it's a point of concern going forward. Okay. So what would be your key concerns? You are a fixed income as well as a macroeconomic analyst. When you hear nine trillion and certainly you're very concerned. What is the first line or what the first point of impact that you would be concerned about? Okay, my main concern in terms of uh, the, uh, the debt uh, accumulation that we have currently, uh, we'll find that people always look at maybe the debt to GDP ratio and you'll find that even the government usually says that uh, debt is not necessarily a bad thing because you'll find that some countries are even beyond 100% and they're still functioning. But for a country, in our case, I think we have to also consider the debt servicing to revenue ratio that we have currently. Because you'll find that uh, the recommended threshold by uh, the World Bank was, I think it was at around 30%. And from the estimates that we have, uh, currently our ratio stands at 34%. 34%, So it, so okay. it means that we're using around 34% of our revenues that the government is getting from maybe taxes to service our debt. And, and that that's looking at our current debt, which is 5.9 trillion. Which is now 5.9 trillion. That is servicing both the external and, and the, the internal local. debt. So 34% uh, of our revenues. Our revenues currently. Okay. And if the, your, have you tried to extrapolate this and see what would the, uh, be the immediate impact if we moved to 9 trillion overnight? Uh, uh, we haven't done that, uh, but also, but even considering 34%, uh, we still above the recommended threshold, which is 30%. So okay. definitely to have a negative uh, impact going forward. And this 30%, would it be 30% of what the KRA, the Kenya Revenue Authority, collects every year? Yes, that is the uh, currently now the 34% is uh, the total revenue. Okay. So we are using that 4% of our total revenue to service the debt that we have currently. And the total revenue being 1.6 of the government budget. Uh, for for the coming year, they are projecting around uh, to collect uh, revenues of around 2.1 trillion, of which I think it's also uh, very optimistic because from historical records, the government is, hasn't been able to achieve their targeted returns, and that also brings a problem when it comes to the debt because uh, with the expectations of uh, uh, getting uh, those high revenues, okay. we also expand our expenditure side and. Uh, with the government not being able to achieve uh, the targeted returns, we end up with a huge uh, fiscal deficit. Like okay. this year, it was expected, I think, at around uh, this coming financial year, it's around 607 billion. Yes. And all of that 607 billion will be financed by debt. Yes. And with maybe the expectations of the government not maybe able to achieve the revenue targets, definitely we'll have to even borrow more than that 607 billion. Okay. So that is still a uh, main concern. It's, it's very concerning and it's also a bit confusing because it feels like there are very many numbers that are going out, that are out there, but then it's not very clear what are the reference numbers to use if you're looking at the percentages or the absolute numbers. Does that, does that worry you when you're doing your analysis? Okay, it doesn't really worry us because if you look at the absolute numbers, sometimes they might not really communicate uh, the intensity of the issues that we have at hand because like if you look at uh, maybe the 5.8 trillion that we have, you have to maybe uh, look at also the the GDP that is supporting that okay. 5.8 trillion because right. it will also depend with the size of the economy, not only the absolute number. Okay. But then if we look at, uh, and if we say we're moving from 5.9 to 9 trillion, question is how fast can we get there? But then there's an element of drastic movement from 5.9, uh, that's about 6 trillion to 9 trillion. And we can't see, we, we haven't seen any demonstration of our earnings power to be able to cover the debt serviceability. Because if you expected that, I mean, I would be expecting um, a proposal or economic reforms that would move our revenue from the two trillion that's budgeted today to maybe about four trillion to cover for the debt repayments that would come as a consequence of the nine trillion. What are your views on that? So uh, my views on that mainly will be the main efforts that we are seeing from the government right now is uh, in terms of fiscal consolidation that is trying to reduce the expenditure side. Okay. But it is not really clear how we'll be able to achieve the targeted revenues that is like for example this year of 2.1 trillion because in as much as uh, we see that there are maybe some tax proposals in order to expand uh, the targeted revenues there is also so much uh, you can do with tax revenues because it also have it also has the negative effect also in terms of economic growth because if you tax the economy so much, it also means that uh, you will also like chase away the 
uh, the foreign investors, also things such as SMEs, you'll be killing SMEs, so in, it will be counteractive. So in as much as you're trying to raise more revenue at the end of the day, you'll then end up having uh, lower revenues than expected. Okay. But Gita, I hear you on that with the element of it being counterproductive. But it does feel like there's economic theory and then there's what is happening on the ground. Because there's no, if you're going to raise from 5.9 to 9 trillion, it means that somebody will have to be taxed to pay for this one way or the other. So does that mean that expect the SMEs to be crowded out, expect the existing business environment to be highly taxed? In other words, what does this mean for GDP growth outlook? So uh, definitely, like I've mentioned, we'll expect that there'll be, if, they, if there's increased taxation, definitely it will affect uh, the businesses. Like this year, we've also seen companies such as maybe you know, Sport Pesa, yes. BT and Closing Show because of the taxation. So that is one element that definitely if, uh, there is excessive taxation we'll have to expect. And in terms of uh, GDP growth, uh, definitely it will have a negative effect. If, uh, for example, um, companies start closing down uh, people won't have disposable enough disposable income so as to maybe buy commodities because it will have a trickle down effect if some companies close down definitely you'd have to uh, maybe f fire people yeah. if people are fired definitely there will be uh, reduced demand in terms of maybe goods and services so it will affect uh, the entire economy so there's a trickle down effect which uh -huh. is i mean it's neither here or there it all depends on when we hit the nine trillion mark yes. okay let's look at the macro numbers we've, we've already touched on gdp and the expected volatility on that number depending on what happens in the business environment more so on taxation what are your views when you're talking about inflation today so uh inflation like currently currently in terms of inflation i think we are relatively doing favorably uh, like last month it was at around 3.8, it was 3.8 percent. So okay. this year we haven't seen a lot of elevated elevation in terms of inflation. It is still within the government target. Yes. Uh, so but maybe going forward in terms of, uh, because you're having the conversation on debt, in terms of debt and inflation, um, there's still some arguments behind it because mm -hmm. you'll find that uh, some economists uh, say that in, in as much as debt is elevated, it usually has a positive effect in terms of inflation because when people are servicing, uh, because it is in terms of uh, servicing of the debt, it will essentially lead to maybe a decline in money supply and you'll find that money supply is usually the one that drives, increased money supply is okay. usually drives inflation. Okay, that's so on the demand side uh, of inflation. But what about the supply side? Because there are also some constraints. So for example, if taxation increases as a consequence of debt, with the main purpose of being able to afford to repay uh, the debt, would there be a risk of having fewer suppliers of some of the goods and services and prices being spiked? In other words, an impact on supply side inflation? Okay, I, th I think mm -hmm. I think I think that might happen. Yes. Because definitely there is also a decline in demand, but also yes. I think with the decline in demand, definitely it will have also affect the supply side okay. because. Uh, so it's more or less I neutral, I at think least it's for neutral. inflation. In terms for of now. inflation, I think it's, okay. it's something to to maybe look at. Okay, okay, fantastic. Let's take a look at the impact, the possible impact on interest rates. So today we are operating in an environment where we have a rate cap and then there is the element of this debt. The question is, will it be local, will it be uh, foreign debt? But before we answer that question, let us take a quick break. The NSC has just closed. We will come back to you with the closing numbers as well as a continued conversation with regards to the impact of debt on Kenya's macros. See you shortly.